I think we are all gathered. This this is everybody. Well, welcome. Sorry we have to gather on such a sad occasion. But I'll say a few words in a minute that I hope will help us find a way through all the sadness and find some happiness and grief in the midst of all of what we're going through today. Sandra was a longtime friend. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. I am convinced, writes the Apostle Paul, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. But perhaps the words we need to hear the most today are the words of our Lord himself in the Beatitudes when he said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We come today to remember before God our sister in Christ, Sandra Lee Anderson. Sandra was 75 years old when she died on Friday, the 8th of October, 2021, at her residence. She was born May 21st, 1946, here in Pittsylvania County, a daughter of the late William Samuel Billy Anderson and Dorothy Owen Anderson. She was a member here of the Green Pond Baptist Church, was a school teacher with Campbell County and Lynchburg City Schools for 42 years. She was a graduate of Lynchburg College, now University of Lynchburg, and a 47-year member of Alpha Delta Kappa. Sandra is survived by three brothers, Ted of Gretna, Ricky, his wife Kathy of Chatham, Owen and his wife Kitty of Durham, and a special friend, Maxine Cheek of Lynchburg. There are numerous nephews, great nieces, and nephews that survive her. I'm going to make some kind of an attempt, if I can, to fulfill one of her wishes for this day. It's a beautiful hymn, and the words, I think, meant something to her because of her love for the world around her, but they speak volumes to us. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known let us pray lord grant us strength for this day bless us with your presence in the name of christ our lord Brother Steve. For those of you who are family and friends, you probably do not know me. I'm the interim pastor here at Green Pond Baptist Church. And I knew Sandra by way of Ted. And I heard more stories about Sandra than I could probably think about or hear about. And Sandra was a very special person, not only to Ted, but also to us as well. If you have uh, an opportunity to remember, this is some scripture that Jesus also talked about to his disciples because they were going through their last days and uncertainty as well. 
And John writes these words in chapter 14. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms, and if that were not so, I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be there where I am. These are God's words for us today. And as we think about Sandra, one of the things that comes to my mind, because Sandra was a school teacher, and somehow the connection with me was that I have a daughter who teaches middle school down in North Carolina. She's been teaching that for about 10 or 11 years or so. And there's something about a teacher that you have to be prepared. If you're not gonna be prepared, there's a good likelihood the kids are gonna rule the classroom and stay the other way around. <laughs> Knowing Sandra, she was probably prepared. Not only was she prepared, but she also loved what she was doing with the kids. She loved what she was doing. She was prepared and she loved her kids. And at the same time, if she was just like my daughter, there was good likelihood she knew that she was preparing for the future because she was looking at the next generation of leaders in our society. She knew that there was gonna be a likelihood that who she was gonna teach and how she was gonna teach was gonna get them ready for the next opportunities of life. She was preparing them and she was trying to do that. That was one thing I appreciate about Sandra is that she had a passion and a heart for looking not only at the present for what she needed to do and the passion that she had, but she was also preparing for the future. The other thing that I've also heard through Ted and through many other things as well, is that we have heard that if there was something going on here at Green Pond, if we had something that we wanted to do, even in the last two years that I've been here, she was there and say, how can I help? What can I do? What are some things I can do? Because what she wanted to give was not for today. She wanted to give toward the future. She wanted to look toward the future. And Jesus in this passage was looking at his disciples and said the same thing to them. Don't worry about it. I've prepared something and it's for the future. I've got the future all taken care of. Don't worry about it. It'll be just fine. And I think as we gather today, these are some words that we can draw comfort from in the sense that as much as Sandra was trying to do to get ready for the next generation of folks in our society, Jesus in this passage was trying to tell us as well, don't worry, be comforted. I've got the future ahead of me. Would you join me as we pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you today, we come to you today to remember and celebrate the life of Sandra Lee Anderson, one of your children. We also come to you now to remind ourselves that we are finite and our days are numbered just like Sandra's. Lord, thank you for your presence with us in this time of grief and uncertainty. Thank you for your peace that passes this world's understanding and for a hope of eternal life through your Son. We are so grateful to you knowing that this is not the end, but just the start of a glorious journey of Sandra with you that you prepared for her so long ago. Now guide us by your spirit in this service today to not only reflect on the mercies you bestowed on Sandra, but also on us as well. Let us realize to be more mindful of the gifts that you have endowed on us so that we may be more like you in these challenging days ahead. We pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. So I first met Sandra in 1987. She came to church frequently in those days, would drive out from Lynchburg to spend the weekend with her parents. Sometime during that period, and I, I couldn't tell you exactly when, it was the summer because she was on vacation. She was out at Billy and Dorothy's and, and as Dorothy was wont to do, she would call me sometime and she would say, we've got some salad and cornbread, you want some? And of course she knew the answer before she called me. So she was actually inviting me to lunch. And so I would always go. So one time it was happening about every week and my wife finally got jealous and told Billy he had to take care after lunch at some point, but anyway, I'm not sure if that ever happened. He promised her a can of beans at the corner store. But anyway, Sandra was there on this particular day is the reason I remember this particular occasion. And we were sitting around the table with Sandra and me and Billy and Dorothy. And 
I taught school a couple of years myself, and so Sandra and I got to telling stories about school teaching. And, uh, you know, first one, you know, one story leads to another, you know how it works. And uh, finally, <laughs> Billy said, y'all quit talking business <laughs> and come on and eat. So uh, I think we had to get up and go eat uh, the salad and cornbread before it, it uh, got too cool. I want to begin today with looking at two verses of the scripture. Um, the first one is from the book of Proverbs. Um, and I think it, it, it's very applicable to this day. Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Apply your heart to instruction. The other text is from the book of Deuteronomy, from the Torah, the law. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, and you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. God will bless the reading and the hearing of these two verses, passages from his word. I made myself some notes here because I knew that if I didn't, if I started, <coughs> I had so many things in my head about Sandra and the years that I would just keep on. So I, I tried to narrow it down by putting some notes together. When Nicodemus came to Jesus looking for more in his life, he was a wealthy man of status, and yet he realized that something was missing from his life. And upon seeing Jesus, he addressed him as teacher or rabbi. For Jesus indeed was a teacher. The author of the Proverbs reminds us in the text I read today of the importance of applying our hearts to instruction and our ears to words of understanding. But first, we must have a teacher. In the fifth book of the law, Moses instructs the people and us, lay up, he said, the works from the Lord in your hearts. But to do that, these words also must be taught, for Moses reminded us, you shall teach them to your children. One of the highest callings is to teach. Knowledge is important to our understanding of the world and our understanding of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the word of the Lord. Sandra was, first and foremost, a teacher, and as Brother Steve has alluded to so well, she first thought of her children, the students she taught. When she came home to visit Billy and Dorothy, she would often come to church with them, and she always had a story for me about the students that she loved so well, the students that she loved teaching. It was the core of her life. She was proud to have taught in Campbell County and the city of Lynchburg for a total of 42 years. Well over half of her life was spent teaching, improving growing minds, opening the world to those she taught. For 47 years, she was a member of Alpha Delta Kappa Sorority, an organization that is dedicated to educational excellence and working for good schools and good teachers. From the time she graduated Lynchburg College, now the University of Lynchburg, Sandra dedicated herself to teaching and expanding young minds. But she was more than a teacher, much more. She was a daughter, totally dedicated to her parents. She was a sister, dedicated to her brothers. She was a friend, always available for those who surrounded her. But there comes a day, a time for us all. There is, the writer of Ecclesiastes says, a time to be born and a time to die. Sandra was born May 21st, 1946. Her time to die was October 8th, 2021. Between those dates, Sandra lived a life well lived. Knowing her for all of these years, I am confident that the Lord would say to her upon her arrival, well done, well done, good and faithful.
we come today to lay to rest this body that has toiled through the years, knowing that today we are committing to the earth only that which is of the earth. Sandra's spirit is in the hands of the same loving God who cared for her in life and who has provided life everlasting for his own. This beautiful spot in God's acre near her beloved mom and dad is about to receive the body of this loved one. The white snow of winter, the green grass of spring, the flowers of summer will make beautiful this resting place. But we know, we know the spirit that animated this body is not here. Like a flower, it has been uprooted from the garden of the world and is now replanted in the garden of God. Of course your hearts still cling to this body. How do you separate it from the many precious memories connected with it? But let us look forward with hope to the time when we too have been carried across these same pulpits and will be able to say good morning again in that land where death will be no more. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take unto himself the soul of our sister in Christ, Sandra Lee Anderson, we therefore this day commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the sure and certain hope of the resurrection at the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus, at whose coming to judge the world, the earth and sea shall give up their dead, and the bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and be made like his glorious body, according to that power by which he is able to subdue all things unto himself. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we gather beside the grave of our loved one and friend Sandra today to lay her body to rest. But we do so remembering another grave and another place, the tomb that received the body of our Lord. As Jesus came from the grave to live again, we are confident that all who die in him shall never truly die. So help us, Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. With our trust in him who said, do not be afraid, I am the first, the last, the living one. I was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. We pray now your blessings on Sandra's family and friends. We pray today that your love and grace may surround them. And again, we thank you for the provision of eternal life that comes through us through Christ our Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his countenance upon you and grant you peace for this day and forevermore. In the name of Christ Jesus, Lord.